Hello, welcome back. I'm Dr. Nisikowski, and here is the evaluation of the 10th rule book based on my research. Uh, there's a previous video where I, I evaluated Marvel United, that's rule book number nine, and then my dissertation uh, describes the first eight rule books. So this is something I'm planning on doing as often as possible. This particular rule book, though, took more time than normal because it's a revision of a previous rule book, and it's Joan of Arc. I've bought all into the game system. I backed the full Kickstarter, and then I backed the 1.5 revision. So uh, what you're about to see here is an evaluation of the revised rule book 14B, which I believe uh, came out this summer. So let me uh, take you through the process here. All right, but before we do that, it's important to understand that this is, uh, I'm doing this for purposes of criticism and comment, scholarship, and research. Uh, so I am continuing my research that I uh, completed uh, with my dissertation. And uh, these three PDFs are available to help write comprehensible rule books. And that's the purpose of this, is to provide suggestions to improve this draft rule book. Uh, so there's time if they, the people who uh, made the game, if they want to watch this video and make changes, uh, there's still time to do that. I don't think they've gone to press yet. In fact, I think they reopened the pledge manager at this time. Uh, but anyways, let's get to the evaluation using the performance list, uh, which is made up of 92 features. But before I do that, here's a little history about uh, my involvement, uh, last year over the summer, uh, someone on Board Game Geek offered to uh, fund a how to play video and I took that person up on that and that video has about 4,500 views to date, 92 likes, 4 dislikes, you can't please everybody. Uh, and so I have enjoyed this game, I was able to get through the rule book, but you'll see in the how to play video I actually went through a different order and the uh, way to describe it then that's in the rule book. And so I, uh, Mythic Games reached out to me and thanked me for uh, making the video about a year ago. And then I asked them if they wanted me to do any other uh, playthroughs. And I haven't heard back from them and that was over a year ago. So I'm still willing to do that if they contact me. But the reason why I'm pointing that out is I think this happens typically in the board game industry. I've been involved for 21 years. There's a lot of companies that are uh, drinking from the fire hose during a fire. And so I think there's a lot of thing, uh, things on their plate and they don't have time to respond to comments, which is unfortunate, but it is possibly the situation. So let's take a look at why am I, why am I saying that? Because before I made this video two weeks ago, I reached out to him and said, is this the most current version of the rule book before I evaluate it. And I reached out on their publisher website, on the Kickstarter, and to somebody that I know uh, that works for the company. And I, it was all, there was only crickets. So no response saying, use the one you have, or here's a better one, nothing. So hopefully this will be useful uh, because I would have liked to have had the most recent rule book to uh, make this video. All right, so let's take a look at the rating. Okay, so the score was 108 points out of 177 possible. That means five points was not uh, possible to evaluate, which I'll get to in a moment, which means it had a comprehensibility percentage of 61% based on uh, the research in my dissertation. Now, if for those of you who had not seen the previous video, what does that mean? Well, the performance list was created by 21 experts in the industry and based on uh, evaluating coding, uh, 50 Board Game Geek threads of over 500 BGG users. And so the combination of the recommendations of experts in the industry and then coded to Board Game Geek users who came up with a performance list of 92 features that, uh, uh, what's the word for it? <laughs> uh, that's uh, weighted so you can get a score. So this is the 10th rule book. 
Hundreds more are going to have to be evaluated over time here to see if the, these ratings hold up to uh, the categories I'm about to share with you. So let's take a look at those categories. So what does the 61% mean? Well, according to my proposed findings, again, these are findings, this is not theory. According to my proposed findings, the rule book is considered annoying, which means learning the game from the rules requires sustained effort and less motivated readers may give up or decide it is not worth the effort. Why am I saying that? Uh, in this case, uh, I would say that's true. Why would somebody a year ago pay for me to do a video, not from the company, but because this person wanted to have a how to play video to help other people to learn the game. Uh, there was also was a lot of rule questions and there was a, a, a fact sheet that came out as well. So there's a front and back fact sheet here. Anyways, back to this rating here. Referencing may be frustrating and that's true. It's very difficult to frustrate, which you'll see in a moment why. And comprehensibility is not confident where outside resources may be sought to clear up confusion. Why I, that's for instance why I downloaded the fact sheet at that time to clarify things. Now it's only a little bit away from frustrating, uh, which means that some people who are not used to reading difficult rule books might be frustrated and give up. And it's unlikely that some people, uh, very few people will find it pleasurable. So th there is some leeway here on this but with a 61% uh, comprehensibility score, uh, that falls in the annoying category. Now let me explain why here. I'm gonna go through each uh, scoring uh, of the 10 categories on the performance list. So let's take a look. So the first one, it did quite well in the overview area. The only uh, area that needed to be uh, Revised is the winning victory conditions are included and an objective of game is stated early. So some of you might who know the game would be like, well, this is because this is scenario based. Yes, that is true. But when you're learning the game, you're either going to include starter, a quick start guide or starter rules or teach it, teach the game from the first scenario perspective. So that way you have more context. So that's, it does mention that, you know, you're going to play a scenario, but then as I'm reading the rules, I should know what, I need to do at least to win the first scenario to provide context. So let's take a look at the next area. So components did quite well, got an 11 out of 11 on that, so 100%. And if you need to pause the video to read these uh, performance list uh, features, uh, please do so, because I'm not going, to, you know, obviously I'm just gonna keep on going. You may need to pause it as you go along here. Okay, so content is a very big, uh, is an area that uh, it, it got it lost a lot of points. Basically, it got 18 out of 30. So, now this is a big issue here with content 3.3. Similar content is grouped together. So, let me show here. I got to switch. I'm running multiple computers here to do this. Uh, first, let me point out that this is the original rule book here. I will. I may refer to this, but now I'm going to show you the PDF. This took a while to evaluate because it was important for me to first go through and to note the differences. So I'm going to show you that first, how that was coded. So you'll see here on the PDF, I noted any changes in, in green, basically new text, and any yellow that was revised. And then I might have made some notes here uh, with little text boxes. For instance, this will say, uh, if I can see it, uh, removed engineer reference. So, so I, I might have made a, re a reference to myself here as I was reading it. So one thing that this rule book does not do in its current form, it doesn't tell you what changes there has been. Now that would be a different video in itself just to talk about the changes to the rule book. Okay. And you'll see that anything in green is basically new text. Anything yellow is revised text. And you can, for instance, this is just a picture they stuck in there. Maybe it's a placeholder uh, for, so they added two pages to the rule book and that's uh, uh, maybe a placeholder to put extra content if it needs to. But again, you can see as I scroll through here, uh, for instance, adding uh, 
the uh, action cubes there as, I, as uh, symbols, basically as icons, was, is new. But it's not done uh, consistently throughout. A lot of changes here to green for rallying a unit. And if this is for those who have the rule book already, who are interested in knowing how many changes were made. Now, again, I didn't go through this two or three times. If I really wanted to make sure things, uh, what's been changed, I would have gone through two or three more times because I, I might have missed some things. But you can see all the changes that are made. So that's the first thing I had to do because, like I said, I know how to play the game even though I haven't played it in a while. But it was important for me to note what was changed. So again, this is just for context here for those who, uh, who have read the first rule book but have not looked at the, the revised rule book for the 1.5 uh, reprint. Okay, so let me go back to the PowerPoint here. I should say the Google Slides. Oops, I'm about ready. I was pressing the wrong thing here. Let me try this again. Again, I record this live. I don't tend to edit. Uh, I just don't have time to do the edits for these videos as I'd like to. All right, so let's go back to the performance list uh, rating. All right, so similar content needs to be grouped together. Now, I'm going to show you the old rule book only because there's, it's pretty much the same layout. So one thing that's going on here, and this is a big uh, area of concern that I have, it goes through all the components here first, okay? Without context, all these pages on components. And then the game overview happens, okay? Then it goes through orders and then actions. The problem is if you want to be able to figure out, if it talks about a move action, you got to flip back here to the game overview, how you do that. And then if you want to know how tiles are set up and spacing, and then it has capacity now in the new rules. So you basically have to flip through three different sections. So this is a huge concern of why it falls into the annoying area, okay? And you're gonna see it, it, it becomes a domino effect uh, throughout the rest of the performance list here. So all major rules begin paragraphs and are not hidden in minor places. Let me see what particular area that is here real quick. So I'm looking at my other computer here. Uh, so for instance, on page 16, again, let me show you that here on the PDF. So this is a problem when, you, when I'm looking at a digital PDF here. I have to uh, go to it real quick here and then switch screens. So on page 16, it would help if it had a, a uh, a list, for instance, let me show you that. So it has all these rules here. And again, I guess it looks like it might be hard to read on, on the screen here. Uh, I wonder if I can make this full screen. But uh, it would be helpful to list, for instance, the things that you can do here in these different phases and turns that you saw later on in the book in terms of actions. Okay, that's my point about ha providing more context. Yes, you're going over the phases and turns, but it'd be nice to have a, a list of the things that you can do during those phases and turns right then and there. Okay, so another issue that it has is that uh, all, key, all key concepts, let me uh, make sure I'm reading this properly. All key con co uh, concepts are explained in context. So again, that goes back to the, the complaint that when you uh, look at page 7 through 12, it has the component section is going for over all these components. And I don't even know, well, as I'm reading it, what does it have to do with the game? You basically read this the first time and you're like, okay, maybe I'll get it later. And then you read it again a second or a third time after you've read the rule book once, which isn't very efficient. Okay, uh, and then another area is, is it logical ordering? Again, that covers page 16. And then uh, when you discuss orders and rallying and bonus actions on 16 and 17, it would have been better to explain that in a different order. So again, it's hard to show you in, in detail here, but there's issues here 
that would have been better explained earlier. Okay, for instance, they moved the rally part in a different spot here than in the original rule book. Now, that might, now might be better uh, for this version of the rule book, but in terms of rallying, it's, uh, it talks about it, if I remember here, it doesn't really mention it right here. It would been good to have it on the list. Okay, so let me go back to the, uh, the Google Slides here. So there's certain things that might that have been uh, put in sequence earlier, and also explain the, the player turn actions in context with all the options that you have, and then you go through it. All right. So tutorial playbook. This is where there's going to there's a lot of scenarios in the game. In fact, we're revising them right now for understand for play balance. There are some war games. Now, this is a war game mostly that you they introduce rules and you play a scenario. Introduce more rules, play a scenario. Now, that is an option that I'm going to explain later on in this presentation that I would recommend Mythic Games ask the audience, would they like that style of rule book? Rather than going with this style, assuming that this is what we, what we want as players. So... Sequence of play outlines what, uh, so 3.10, again, it goes back to that ordering issue. The sequence of play outline provides to frame what players can do, what well, provides that list, but it doesn't give me the sub list of things that I can do right then and there. Uh, scoring in detail 3.12 is not included in this evaluation because it's, it's dependent on the scenario that you play. So let's go to the next section. That was content. So now we're on to examples. And again, this is a big area of concern. All core game mechanics are not provided, explained through the examples. There's actually very, uh, how would you say, sparse in terms of providing examples. So, and then they're not all, and the examples they have, that they do provide don't include visuals for every one of them. Uh, strategy hints are not provided. And a, a round of playthrough is not provided. So some of the, one of the, the most comprehensible rule books of the first eight I evaluated for my dissertation was Combat Commander uh, Europe, which is also used for Pacific and Mediterranean. That is one of the highest rated rule books of all the rule books I looked at as possible to evaluate, received a high score from Board Game Geek users, and it also received a high comprehensibility score. And one of the reasons why is because it includes a round of playthrough in a reference document. It has two rule books. One is, the, is the, the, all, the, all the rules and then a reference document with the scenarios and a round of playthrough. This game, in my opinion, would benefit from that. Okay, so language is active voice is used in expository text throughout with few exceptions. Uh, Again, it's, it, it has problems with that at times. It does passive voice and then goes to active voice. It depends on how they, you know, how they use their commas. Expar so expository language is not direct. All expository paragraphs are brief. There are some paragraphs uh, that are longer because it includes parentheses and multiple commas. So in other words, there are compound sentences that makes it difficult to read. Again, these are minor things. That's why... It's two points instead of three points, but it does make a reader slow down, which means a reader is expending cognitive resources to read that sentence, to dissect it, and to figure out what's it asking me here again. You got to read it again because it has a compound sentence or a parenthesis. And so again, it slows you down. We'll just, why not just make it two or three sentences? It's not that hard to do that. You just have to re uh, edit it to be that way. And I've had a problem, and I still do, you know, writing long sentences. Again, you got to be disciplined and continue doing short sentences throughout. So all expository sentences are short, which it's not. Action verbs begin uh, sentences that describe player or setup actions. So this is important for referencing when you go through a setup or you're providing a bulleted list that you know that it says shuffle or draw, uh, play, order, move. Words like that are easy to scan when you're trying to figure out what you need to do. And so this is rec recommended by six, I'm sorry, uh, uh, books on, on, on uh, 
document design that I use for my, for my uh, literature review. And that's one of the recommendations. And it's supported by the experts that were surveyed to do that, especially with setup rules. So again, this is not David's world here of this is the way a rule book should be. No, it's based on 21 experts over uh, hundreds of BGG users and books on document design. So all expository language is gender neutral. Now, it's, there is some she, he, instead of saying player. Again, this can be distracting for some people when you're, when you're exchanging, uh, when, you're not using, when you're using pronouns uh, interchangeably. Okay, so the next one is terms, symbols, and icons used in gaming that are not common or defined the first time they are encountered or referenced. So there was an issue, and it's, it's minor enough that infirmary, for instance, is talked about on page 12 and page 16 in the revised rule books, but it's not defined until later on. So that you're reading it and you're like, what do you mean by that? What does that mean? I mean, I know what the word infirmary means, but how does it mean in the context of the game? For instance, they'll talk about the word uh, river, but it defines it right away. It refers to having cards placed in a particular area of the, of the board. So let's see the next one here. So now we get into referencing, and many rule books have trouble with this. So rule summaries are not provided in the margins. Uh, there are certain game rule books that do that, and BGG users prefer that. Uh, player aids, such as cards or reference charts, describe basic order of play. Uh, so there are no player aids. Now, does it include a reference sheet? Yes, it does. But it's not the most useful reference sheet, and the text size is so small, it's, uh, it's very difficult to use. Okay, which you'll see here in a moment that it did get credit for that, that it has a, a summary aid, okay, uh, that it has a, uh, a reference sheet. Now, one thing is that this rule book, at least one rule book, includes all rules as a comprehensive reference when multiple rule books are provided. Uh, that is not, uh, it was not evaluated because this is not a two rule book system. Some game systems, especially war games, have two rule book systems. So that was not evaluated for this. So that's why it's only 177 points uh, possible instead of 182. Okay, quick start rules are provided. I recommend that they do that. Uh, reference su supplement with detailed rule descriptions is provided for longer rule books. Now this is a, let's take a look here, 35 page rule book and the revised one, I believe it's 37. Now, if you include the, the back, maybe it's 38, depending on how you count it. Okay. Again, this adds two pages to the old rule book. So let's take a look at the next part. So the next part of referencing index is not included. It should be have one or an appendix. Now it does have a glossary, but that's not the same thing as an appendix. Okay. So you have a glossary. So an appendix should have a reference to the let's see here. Yeah, so there was no index. That would have been very useful to have that. So an appendix needed to include a little bit more than just this. So this is mostly a glossary, which I gave credit for that. All right. Uh, so it includes those other things. Again, you can pause it to see what it, what it does have. So emphasis techniques. Uh, headers are no more than three levels of hierarchy. So let me uh, show you what that looks like real quick. Let me find it in the PDF. Because there's a particular area that I wanted to show you that there's over, I think there's four or five levels of hierarchy. Which makes it hard for you to reference when you have so many different levels. So let me take a look here. It's on page... Sixteen through eighteen. Okay, let me get to that. Okay. So you see, you have game overview as one level, console phase is another level with that green. I mean, with the blue. Then you have upkeep as another. So now you have three levels. That's the most you should have. Then you'll see here in a moment that it will introduce. That level, destroy a unit. So that's your fourth level. 
And then later on here, where did I miss it? It has some headings here of a different size. Yeah, right here, more than two players. And right here, this is centered. So it has like four or five levels. You should only have three. Again, I just wanted to show that because that's one particular area where you can get lost when you're referencing. All right, so let me get back to the slides. All right, so emphasis methods are consistent. So uh, one tech, a common technique that rule books do, and more research needs to be done as to what gamers prefer. Do they prefer words in bold, capital letters? The whole point of emphasis techniques is so you can find something quickly when you're during the game, when you're having to look up something, especially when you have a long rule book like this and you're playing the game for the first time. In my opinion, capital letters doesn't really work well for referencing. Now, that, again, that's something that needs to be revised uh, in the performance list in the future after uh, more research is done is to see what BGG users prefer. In other words, you have a rule book that maybe uses one emphasis technique, and rule book, the same rule book, but uses a different one, and maybe a third technique. And then you survey uh, users to see what they prefer. In my opinion, bold is more effective than using capital letters. Now, this rule book does use capital letters for certain terms, but not consistently. So rally, for instance, is not always capitalized, and then it, or neither is infirmary. And so that's just two instances I noticed, and there might be more if I really wanted to uh, get type A about it. All right, so uh, emphasis 8.5 and 8.6, this would be very uh, useful to sequence steps. There's a lot of multi-step parts here, but it's just done as a paragraph or as paragraph, and then another paragraph and another paragraph. It would be better to do a list. Again, that's for referencing that when you emphasize like that, you can also find it easier. Uh, and so that's important for sequencing and player actions. Okay, so the other one is formatting. Now I'm gonna show you uh, a little joke here about page background. The page background isn't terrible, okay? But there are times though with this brown background and when it has brown text or red text that it's difficult to read. In addition, you're using up this nice space here that could be done to increase the size of the text. So when you have it like this, I mean, the contrast is decent, but there are times, again, I'm, I'm showing you the old rule book here, like when you get to this, that it's not that effective, especially when you're looking at the PDF. So I did get dinged for that. Some people might be, be like, I disagree with that, and that's fine. Again, this perform to add more reliability and validity to this performance list, it'd be nice to have two other people, for instance, evaluate the rule book and see if we come up with the same score. I could see, for instance, some people saying, well, the skills is like an appendix. Okay, then they get points for that. And maybe the background isn't that bad. Well, that would be more points, but still, maybe it goes from a 61% to 64%. It's still gonna have, uh, be in the annoying area. In fact, it could go the other way where people it more and it falls into the frustrating area. All right, so the other area is open white space. Again, this affects open white space when you're using that much margin. Okay, so the other area is that there is some uh, widows and orphans. So this revised draft, you'll have a sentence that will be right above on the next page or next column, I could say, I, and you could miss that. Or you'll have uh, one word sticking out somewhere, and again, you can miss that as well. Again, this is a a formatting technique that's especially used in journalism. Uh, but again, this is not journalism, but it, again, it's important. Now, the body text is 10 points. Some parts it is not. And you're gonna have, you can't necessarily go by 10 point. You gotta measure it by inches uh, because not all points are the same depending on the font you're using. Now, so if you look, for instance, here, this is pretty much worthless to try to read, okay? Very difficult. I, for instance, I don't care about this necessarily. I want to see this larger text. Uh, this might be nice to have on a separate sheet, but I'd rather have this on another sheet here and have it much larger. So again, that's my opinion on that, but it's definitely too small. Okay, the next one, we're almost done here, is 
rules can be understood without visuals. This is a very difficult one to meet. The, and I mentioned this in the Marvel United, which rule book met that of the original eight in my dissertation. The only one that met that was Ticket to Ride, that you could read that rule book without seeing any visuals, except for setup, of course, is, is helpful. But that's setup, not necessarily the main rules. Okay, concepts are supported with visuals, not always in this rule book. It needed more tables and diagrams and charts to help clarify the rules. It does have some charts, but not enough. Visuals are a high resolution. So that is an issue with, well, the PDF, they did say in the Kickstarter that it's not high resolution. But even then, you can have difficult figuring out what's what without labels here. So when you go through the setup, I remember when I first was setting this, I was trying to figure out what's what here. So you need to include labels or make that high resolution or blow it up more. And visual, uh, so the next one, all visuals are labeled. Nope, they're not all labeled, which is again, you need that for context. And then uh, color blindness considered. Uh, it's can be difficult to distinguish that red on the uh, background on this background here. I can only imagine that somebody with color blindness might see it, uh, might have difficulty with this right here. And then certain uh, cubes, for instance, the cube colors can be different. Could be difficult. Might be difficult to read without. Uh, some kind of symbol on it. Well, it's not in this version, but in the, in the new version. Uh, what was the last one? Uh, flavor visuals do not distract from the overall speed. Now, again, here's the old rule book here. And they've removed some of these, but I really don't need, I don't care about this. Okay, I want to read the rules. Make this smaller. I want I don't want to be distracted by this stuff. Like this whole, col whole column here. When I'm going through the rule book, I want to be able to reference it. This is not going to help me reference it. I'm like, okay, what's on this page? Okay, I can't find what I need. And I, I ignore this. And I, I don't need to see this either. You can make them smaller, but I'd rather have a smaller rule book or increase the size of the text or the images or add more images and examples than they have flavor text. And guess what? BGG users feel the same way from the research. And so do the experts who, who have game companies and who are, have decades of experience. All right, so overall, the top recommendation is group similar contact, a content, revise ordering, and component section. Emphasize first scenario and setup and add quick start rules. Uh, so I wait. The next one is provide more visual examples and a round of playthrough. Improve referencing, and, and many rule books have difficulty with this because they seem to, they tend to forget that, yes, I'm going to read it the first time, maybe two times and, or three times when I'm setting it up, but then when I'm playing it, I'm not going to remember everything. My working memory and short-term memory is, uh, is not, you know, I'm not, I don't have a photographic memory. I'm going to need to look up things. And then when I come back to the game later on, I'm going to have to look up stuff, and especially when I'm playing a scenario where I didn't play with certain rules. For instance, they introduce rules like gigantic and error uh, combat, and I'm going to have to find that and then look back at the other rules to see how they, they combine together. So referencing is so key, so critical uh, to people wanting to play your game more than once. Uh, so reorganize uh, headings and improve emphasis techniques such as keyword, bulleted lists, and charts. Revise the reference sheet. There's parts of it that are not useful and it's too small. Remove flavor visuals and background margin images. I'm gonna go over in more detail on that in just a moment. Add an appendix and index. Now, some might say that the skills is an appendix, uh, but it, some might say it's a glossary. There needs to be more things in the appendix other than the skills and the glossary. Uh, there needs to be other, other things that you can reference, and then, uh, and then, of course, add an index. And so survey the audience for war game rule book, rule book formatting. So this is important to do. There's thousands of backers. Many of them are war gamers. This is a, more of a war game than a RPG. Uh, there's more war game scenarios than there are RPG scenarios. This is, more, this is written more like an RPG. And even then, uh, some would, would question, are RPGs even effectively written? The performance list can be used for RPGs, which I haven't done yet. Uh, I'm mostly looking at board and card games right now. 
Okay, so removing flavor visuals and background margin images. So this is going to be a little controversial here. So some might be might think I'm mocking uh, the rule book. Maybe so, but let's at least um, let's have some fun with it. On the right is an actual uh, bomb warning that is used in an in-flight emergency manual that's used in an airline. That's an actual page from that manual that's in the cockpit. On the left is what somebody might do in the gaming industry to that same manual, uh, especially if it's an RPG. Why are you doing that? I just need the information. I know you want to make it look pretty. And that's why I'm saying that, are you mocking me? Yeah, I kind of am. I prefer on the right. Now, you could include maybe one little image on there to the right, uh, but definitely they'll do background colors and, a, and a, a watermark and they'll have something going down the margin, which is distracting. And by the way, the research shows that you shouldn't do that, and BGG users don't like it, and neither do the experts. So why is it continuing to be done? I think it's continuing to be done because we have a bunch of people who are hired as layouts who love to make things look pretty and not necessarily care about comprehensibility. Okay, so here's an example. On the left is what the original page in the revised rulebook. Look what it looks like on the right when I remove the background. It's, e it's a lot more white space. It's easier to read. In fact, when you do that, you could increase the size of the text because you don't need as much, you can use more of that white space that was taken up by the margins for that decorative stuff that doesn't add anything to the compre comprehensibility. I don't care how cool it looks, I just want to learn the rules. And a lot of people agree that that's more important. By the way, did you notice my little detail there on the left? I made a little airplane there with a hardly, you can't even read the eight on the page number. But again, you could increase the size of the text and make it more readable. So the other recommendation is a survey audience for war game rule book formatting. Now, I might be too late to do this, okay? Maybe they're so far along in the process that they're just going to go with the revised rule book. Maybe they can make some changes based on this video if they care to watch it. Uh, but to do a survey and then revise a rule book using reference numbers like Combat Commander Europe does and many other war, game, war games do, uh, you would have to survey the audience. I would prefer that myself. So let's take a look at... Again, I'm making a joke out of it. Maybe you don't like this plan, that's okay. But consider this. When you forge ahead without considering the needs of your audience, let's take a look at something that's happened in other pop, in other pop culture. So some of you might be aware that Star Trek's not doing too well. Lower Decks on uh, Rotten Tomatoes has a 40%, Picard 56%, Discovery 42%. It's doing terribly because they're not uh, considering their audience. And in fact, licensing is suffering in the Star Trek uh, licensing. And this happened to the same thing with Star Wars Episode Nine. You notice there's not many games based on it or toys. In fact, there's no toys based on Episode Nine. They were scrambling to do Mandalorian, which did respect the audience to get uh, Baby Yoda out. Let's compare that to when there was a time when the audience needs were met. See the difference in the scores between Star Trek, The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine. So again, what happens when you don't respect your audience? They, don't, they maybe don't uh, recommend your game or continue buying the game. So again, 61% in the annoying area. I got through it. I'm an experienced rule book reader. But if you watch my how to play video, I taught it in a different order than the rule book. Uh, and I had to go through it very carefully. And then you'll also see in the playthrough video that I had to do memory aids. Uh, I made, I actually redid the reference list to make it easier to play as well. So you can look down below to contact me how to get these uh, reference documents, uh, how to get these uh, PDFs if you're interested in comprehensible rule books. The Kickstarter has already ended, but there will be a way to get these uh, documents post Kickstarter. So I made this video as a promise to the Kickstarter uh, backers. I will continue to do this to support those who back and who are interested in meeting the needs of readers and, and uh, writing comprehensible rule books. So thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, make any comments down below and I will respond to them. 
Have a good night. Take care or a good day. Take care.